Digital payments giant PhonePay is making its big e-commerce foray with PIN code. It's a hyper-local shopping app that will go live on ONDC, the open network for digital commerce. Bengaluru will be the first city to go live with grocery and food, with more cities and categories to follow. With 450 million users, PhonePay claims to have one out of four Indians on its platform. 35 million merchants accept payments via PhonePay. Most of them do their business in tier two cities and beyond. This large network could usher growth for ONDC, which started to bring the next UPI moment for India. India's e-retail market is expected to triple from 50 billion in 2022 to 150 billion by 2027 as per a Bain report with the shopper base likely to reach 400 to 450 million by 2027. The growth will be led by new online shoppers primarily from tier 2 and tier 3 cities. PhonePay, which dominates UPI with a 50% market share, knows what a platform like ONDC could do for it. PhonePay is also in the middle of a $1 billion fundraise that valued the company at a whopping $12 billion, far ahead of its payment peers, including Paytm. In a bid to grow beyond payment, the payments firm wants to use this war chest to grow its insurance, wealth management and lending verticals while it builds products on the India stack. Essential steps to hit rupees 10,000 crore rupees in revenue and operational profitability, which the company plans to achieve by 2025. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan and joining me now to talk about PIN code and the road ahead for PhonePay is the company's founder and CEO, Samir Nigam. Samir, many thanks for joining us here on Young Turks. You know, there's a whole host of issues that I want to talk to you about. Lots of regulatory changes, but I'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about the aspiration as far as ONDC and uh, your decision to launch PIN code. Why and how quickly do you intend to scale this? NCR and Bangalore. We're launching first across Bangalore, across 150 PIN codes here. Uh, and then after the, after the top three metros, goal is to be in about 10 to 15 cities by year end. We would call that a win because, again, you have to digitize all the shops in these big cities you have to somehow connect them with logistics networks that, honestly, we don't even know the names of. Many of them are just springing up. Hyperlocal delivery networks, national delivery networks. And you have to connect them using this sort of ONDC glue, which has not been tested at scale. So there's, um, it's an engineer's sort of uh, dream to actually like build networks like this. But on an operating side, there's so much to actually like go through. So we're going to go slow and steady on this one. Uh, Samir, you, know, you also talk about making big investments uh, to try and push uh, the aspiration as far as ONDC is concerned. What could that mean? Quantify that for us. I think uh, if you split the problem into two parts. One is we need to spend a lot of time and effort, uh, the non-capital part, just, just cultivating the entire seller platform ecosystem and the logistics ecosystem. Uh, just for Bangalore, for example, to go live in food, grocery, and pharma, we're working with 10 different seller platforms. It's about 15, 20,000 stores already live. So each one of them has to get digitized. It's a lot of investment on the technology side by us, as well as to facilitate what our, our seller platforms are doing. Um, I think then obviously there's going to be, if we find product market match, then there's going to be a considerable amount of marketing that will happen. Um, we've been on IPL for four years. We'll be there soon again, next couple of days. Uh, rest assured, if we see even an iota of sort of product market match uh, early on, we will we will amplify this fast. Because I think I think there's been a lot of attempts at quick commerce, hyper local commerce, but at the at the guts of it, I feel like the sh the small shopkeepers not being put at the center of of the attempts. And I think if the if the local economy really does start biting then I think, I think there's a lot of investment. And um, I'll just say, I think UPI level investment because the market opportunity is that large. I want okay, to quantify UPI it. level investment. Okay, you won't want to put a number to it just yet. But, you know, what is it going to mean in the near term as far as the expenses are concerned? The expenses have uh, uh, come in at about 3,706 crores. You've, of course, seen big spending on uh, the IPL, the Cricket World Cup, etc. And what will this mean as far as burn is concerned as well? Uh, you know, you're burning about two and a half uh, odd rupees at this point in time to earn a rupee of operating revenue. In terms of burn as well as expenses, what is all of this going to mean? Um, so I think I think numbers uh, mask a couple of things. If you look at where the where the burn went or or the counting burn went, 
more than half of that actually was on the ESOPs that get uh, sort of the, the liability that we have to account for. The second uh, and largest single ticket item on spend for us last year was actually on the CapEx side outside of marketing. Um, we are now at a scale where we're processing over 150 million transactions a day. And it is, it is important for us now to keep investing in infra. So we have five data centers that we actually spent on last year, about 20,000 servers added. So I think that investment on the CapEx side, below EBITDA will continue. Our core business actually grew in triple digits for the fourth year straight. And I believe that we're still tracking for the same this year. So I'm not worried about the core payments business and ads business being profitable. Um, we're getting there on schedule. In fact, 2023 sometime, I think we'll be there. But at a consolidated level, if I think of ONDC, we're not building a supply chain. We're not building a logistics fleet. We are actually just focused on building a great app experience that connects the sellers to the seller platforms. So at least on paper, it should be margin positive on each transaction from day zero. And in part, I actually think that this is why ONDC is so terribly exciting. By separating the roles of the seller platform, the buyer platforms, keeping the pricing discounting out, you actually allow for margin positive commerce uh, growth to happen. So I don't think ONDC will be a drag on our margins in any way. Okay, uh, you expect it to be margin positive on day zero is is, uh, is what you said, Samir. But uh, at, and you caveated the, that well, at least on paper. Sorry. At the, at the contribution margin, it should definitely be positive. I think the brand development will will be an investment. But again, I mean that's that's a long term investment. That's why I said it's it's very much like UBI for us. Time for us to head into a break here. But when we return, we continue our conversation with PhonePay's Samir Nigam. Don't go anywhere. Thank you.